But you know what I'm saying? A real MC will spit lyrics that can uplift the community. It can make a brother change his life. You understand? It can make somebody in the pen hear something that somebody said, God damn, man. That's my story he's talking about right there. You know what, when I get out, I'm gonna try the legal way. I ain't gonna pick up this guy and run up in this motherfucking spot. You know what I'm saying? That's a real MC. You understand? DJ K Slay, Knowledge and Wisdom, the documentary. Welcome to the live television. Please like and subscribe. My show opens up for every penitentiary that can hear me on the radio, me telling them to lock in. Exactly. You understand? They so keep fresh batteries when my show come on. <laughs> it wouldn't take an opportunity. I'd have had one brother tell me up in Sing Sing that with his cell, the frequency was fucked up. So he used to have to stand on his bunk and lean against the wall like Old this time, with some kind of hanger or some shit in order to catch my show wow. for two hours. DJ K. Slade was born Keith Grayson on August 14th, 1966 in the East Rivers Houses located in East Harlem, New York City. Slade was a young street artist known as Dez, painting his tag on building walls and subway cars. As chronicled in the cult documentary Wild Style and Style Wars, he witnessed the birth of hip-hop with the ascent of legendary DJs such as Grandmaster Flash, Grand Wizard Theodore, and cool DJ Red Alert. I didn't so much set out to be a DJ, he said. It was something to do that was fun and that I enjoyed doing. DJ K. Slade served as a crucial bridge between hip-hop generations, developing from a teenage b-boy and graffiti writer into an innovative New York radio personality known for his exclusive mixtapes that documented rap beefs, broke artists, and helped change the music business. DJ K. Slade was the first to bring personality to the mixtape, says Funkmaster Flex, a fellow Hot 97 DJ. That was very unusual. We were just used to the music and exclusives, he said. In the late 1990s, he evolved into DJ K. Slade Drama King, releasing mixtapes throughout the streets of New York City. If nobody gave me an opportunity, I wouldn't be standing here talking to you right now. Right so I, I, it's like a lot of these DJs are so smart, they stupid. You understand what I'm saying? Right. And I say this to say that they ain't figured out that right. all the point. brothers coming up mm -hmm. is the next 50s, the next Jay-Z's, the yeah. next Nas's, the next T.I.'s. Yeah. So, T.I. was first coming around, he was coming by my spot. Ludacris stopped by, Cam Ron and them, you know, and Pat Boots, that's the yeah. artist. But what I'm saying is, when they was coming to see me, they wasn't selling millions of records. Right. But because I extended my hand in the beginning, gave them love, that's why my arm still, you know, is strong. Yeah, yeah. And so the same thing, like Saigon and Duel Ortiz or my artist Pat Poose, Jay Mills, you understand what I'm saying? The brothers like that, I fuck with them because you know, five years from now, a couple of them, God willing, be up there and I still, my arm will never go short. Exactly. If you just support the niggas that's already rich, you don't get no points for that. They already yeah, up there. Yeah, yeah. You gotta reach down and pull up the niggas that's trying to. The whole problem with the rap game right now is there's more rappers than it's fucking fans. You understand what I'm saying? So every nigga that make a record, niggas ain't supporting them because they rap too, so they hate it. Hey, you know. They're going that nigga whack. In 2001, Slay had a breakthrough when he premiered Ether, the Nas diss of Jay-Z. From the suggestion of Funkmaster Flex, radio station Hot 97 gave K. Slay his own late night show, The Drama Hour. Slay gave an early platform to local artists and crews like 50 Cent, G-Unit, Diplomats, Terror Squad, and his own artist, the rapper Pat Poose, both on the show and on the mixtapes that made his name as much as theirs. As mixtapes evolved from the homemade DJ blends on actual cassettes to a semi-official promotional tool and underground economy of CDs sold on street corners and flea markets, record stores, slave events with the times, the DJ K. Slay released his own debut album, The Street Sleeper, Volume 1, on May 20th, 2003. In 2004, K. Slay released his second album, The Street Sleeper, Volume 2. After releasing more than just a DJ in 2010, Rhyme or Reason was released. Yo, know, this ain't no disrespect to anybody that's embracing this game right now or is really going hard with the mixtape game. But I'm from up north, and as far as up north is concerned, when Justo passed away, you know, rest in peace, to me, I felt like the whole mixtape game just died. You understand? Know and then what little left breath that was still there was in it. When, you know, my man DJ Drama caught that situation, it turned to man, fuck that. Who the fuck gonna be sitting on Rogers Island 
talking about I'm in here because I was selling mixtapes. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? It got to the point where, you know, a nigga passion kind of like left out of that because it was like, niggas ain't committing no crime. I mean, we are the backbones of this game. In 2021, DJ K-Slay released a track, Rolling 110 Deep, which features 110 hip-hop artists with contributing verses from Ice-T, Shaq, Coco Rock, KRS one Cool G-Rap, Ghostface, Roy Jones Jr., Omar Epps, and others. I'm gonna be 100 with you, you know? I mean, y'all know how the universe operates. Everything involves 360 degrees. I, I think, you know, North had it for a good minute. And you know, Snoop and Up came, they bought Rush the game, and it was inevitable that uh, the South get their shot to do what they do. You understand? That's just the way it is. Everybody has their time to shine. Now, it's just the different genres of music that I will say that, okay, some shit is hip hop and some shit is fun hop. Okay? It's two different things. Let's not confuse, uh, confuse the two. And when I say that, it's no disrespect anybody that's just like if i hear my man bun b scarface ti a ball mjg ludicrous you know and it's more though that's just an interview that's hip hop okay but soldier boy is no disrespect that's more like fun hop but guess what no no hear what i'm saying though i'm not disrespectful i don't want to hear no young boy talking about busting his gap or somebody that my daughter idolized talking about selling keys or anything, so that's cool. I'm with the soldier boys here. I'm with the little mamas and, and things of that nature. But I, was, I would more say that that's one hop prior to saying it's hip hop, you understand? Because I think hip hop is more of a lyrical form and it's, it's something, hip hop is like separating the difference between a rapper and an MC. Any of us can rap. I could get up here and say, I'm hot, nigga. I'm gangster, nigga. I'm hot, nigga. I'm gangster, nigga. And then put one of y'all on the hook, and we pop it. See, that's rapping. You understand? But, you know what I'm saying? A real MC will spit lyrics that can uplift the community. It can make a brother change his life. You understand? It can make somebody in the pen hear something that somebody said, God damn, man, that's my story he's talking about right there. You know what? When I get out, I'm going to try the legal way. I ain't going to pick up this guy and run up in this motherfucking spot. You know what I'm saying? That's a real MC. You understand? It has substance to his lyrics. A rapper, come on, man. We all could fucking rap. <laughs> now, y'all add on to that. <laughs> he started a magazine called Straight Stunting because he wanted to provide a safe platform for models. After hearing how other men's magazines would try to take advantage of the models who wanted to appear on the covers, DJ K. Slate gave opportunities to models that were ignored by the mainstream and targeted the jail population we always showed love and support to. DJ K. Slate transcended on April 17, 2022 at the age of 55. He left the legacy of helping other artists while staying true to the music. That's why he's a legend. Long live K. Slate.